Hi, I'm Scott from the Rio Grande Tech Team, and today I'm going to show you how to export your ZBrush models for 3D printing. So let's get started. Okay, so I've got my completed ring here, and the first thing we need to do is take a look at it. So I've got my ring shank here, I've got a four prong uh, oval stone and the, the gemstone in here as well. So when we're getting ready for 3D printing, we need to make sure that all of our subtools that we're going to be printing are one unified mesh. Uh, that's what they are referring to when they say a watertight model with 3D printing. I'm going to open up my subtool palette and you can see my three subtools here. Now the stone, I don't need to export the stone for 3D printing. Uh, so I'm actually just going to go ahead and delete that. Uh, so I've got it selected in my subtool palette, and I'm going to click Delete, and then click OK. There's a couple ways uh, to make this a unified mesh, and I'm going to show you two of them today. Uh, we're going to be doing that with DynaMesh and with Booleans. So the first one I'm going to show you is DynaMesh. If you've created your model in DynaMesh already, you can go ahead and use this step. Uh, since this was not created in DynaMesh, I'm going to go ahead and turn it on real quick. So I'm going to navigate to the geometry palette. Uh, my ring is selected. Uh, click on the DynaMesh menu and go ahead and turn it on. So the next step is to unify these two together. And the way we're going to do that is I'm going to make sure that my top subtool or my ring is selected. And in my subtool palette, I'm going to go down to merge and I'm going to do a merge down. And when you do that, this message will pop up. Just click OK. And now we have merged those two subtools into one subtool. And now I will re-dynamesh. So hold control, click and drag and release and now it is one solid DynaMeshed model. Now if I zoom in here, uh, take a look at some of the corners where the geometry was overlapping. See, the reason we're doing this is because uh, before my head was just overlapping the geometry of my ring, and that internal geometry can cause issues with 3D printing. So you wanna make sure that that internal geometry is eliminated and and that's what we've done with this step and and what we'll do with the, uh, the boolean step as well so where it connected and got rid of that internal geometry you can see i've got a bit of a rough edge here so that's not a big issue uh, you can go in with a smooth brush uh, and smooth it out if you wish but i will remind you that with jewelry uh, it's it's going to be much smaller than it looks on the screen. So you're not really going to notice it at all. So I wouldn't worry about uh, spending a lot of time to clean up those edges. You really don't have to worry about it. So the next thing we need to do now that we have our unified mesh is we need to look at our poly count. So right now, I'm sitting just under 2 million polys for this model. Now, depending on the support software for your 3D printer that you're using, uh, you may want to bring that poly count down because when you're turning your screen to, say, add supports and things like that, if it's trying to render a lot of geometry, like a really dense model, then most likely as you turn it, you're going to be looking at a slideshow and everything is going to be really sluggish. So uh, we need to decimate this first. And I like to aim under half million polys if I can. Uh, I've, in the support software uh, programs that I've tried, uh, under half million works just fine. And especially if you're going to be printing multiples, uh, you do want to bring the poly count down just to make things a little easier on yourself and make it go quicker. So the way that I like to decimate these models is uh, in the Z plugin menu up here, there's a plugin called Decimation Master. 
And what Decimation Master will do is it will, it will look at your model here. Uh, let's zoom in real quick. It'll look at the model and determine what areas can be high poly and what areas can be low poly. So around these edges here, uh, these corners on this head are going to be a little higher poly so it can keep that uh, dimensional accuracy. And then the flat areas here, uh, like on the side of this rail or on the top of the ring, it's going to do lower poly because those don't require uh, a higher poly count. So in my Decimation Master plugin, uh, the first thing we want to do is to pre-process. So this is when it will actually look at the mesh and see where those high and low poly areas will need to be. Uh, so there's two options. There's pre-process current and pre-process all. Uh, the current option will uh, pre-process the currently selected subtool. And pre-process all will uh, pre-process all of the subtools in your list here. Uh, since we only have one subtool, I'm going to go ahead and click preprocess current. And now it's going to look at that mesh and see where those high and low poly areas need to be. And you'll get a progress bar up here at the top. Uh, and it usually doesn't take very long. It's a, it's a very quick process. So maybe around 30 seconds or so is uh, pretty standard for this poly count. So that's it. Uh, now I can go back into the Decimation Master. And down here is the Decimate option. So I'm going to click Decimate Current. And now it's done. Now you can see the model didn't change at all, but my poly count went down to about 385,000. So now this is perfect for exporting out and 3D printing. And if I turn on polyframes and zoom in, you can kind of see what it did. So you can see around these edges, higher poly count on these flatter edges, uh, you know, much, much lower poly count, uh, same around here. Uh, it, this plugin is really good at keeping the uh, dimensional accuracy of your model. Uh, just be careful and don't push it too far because the if you push it into really low poly counts, it really has no choice but to start changing the way the model looks. So now we're ready for exporting. So I'm going to go back into the Z plugin menu and open up my 3D print hub. And the first thing we want to do is to click update size ratios. So it will look at the unit measurements of my model and ask me to assign a real world unit for those numbers, uh, whether that's in inches or in millimeters. So here's the um, numbers, uh, the unit measurements of my model, a 21.43 by 6.25 by 19.21. Uh, and it's just asking uh, inches or millimeters. And with jewelry, you're typically working in millimeters. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and click that and go back into the 3D Print Hub. And you can see those numbers have now populated in these boxes here. So the last thing I can do is go ahead and export to STL. So I can click on that, give it a name. And once you've exported it, uh, you'll get this little message here saying files were successfully exported and just click on that to make that message go away. So now I can go to my support software and I'm going to be using the support software for the Formlabs printers. Uh, this is the, their software is called Preform. So now I can go in and open this up, grab my file, and there it is. So I can turn this so it's right side up. And that's it. Now it is ready to have supports put on it and I can go ahead and get it ready for 3D printing. And as you'll notice, because I decimated it, uh, I can move this screen around very easily because we've brought the poly count down. Uh, so if I want to add a whole bunch more on this platform, uh, it's not going to bog down the computer too much. Okay, so let's, let's look at the second method. So I'm actually going to uh, reopen my file that we started with. So 
Same thing as before, I don't need to keep this stone, uh, so I'm going to make sure that it's selected in my subtool palette and click delete. So the second method we're going to be using to make this a unified mesh is booleans. Uh, and I'll show you here in a sec what the main difference is, because uh, there's a couple, couple things to be aware of when you're preparing these for 3D printing. For a more complete education on Booleans, make sure to watch our Boolean video. Uh, we go a bit more in depth about uh, how these Booleans work and uh, how to do it in different ways. But I'm going to make sure that my, my ring is selected. I'm going to click on this arrow here uh, to show ZBrush where I want the Boolean to start. And I'm going to make sure that this option here uh, these little two circles for Boolean addition is selected. Uh, it's on by default. So I could also turn on live Boolean, uh, but you're not going to see any changes uh, because we are adding these two together. So uh, there, you won't see any, any difference there. So everything from my Boolean is ready to go. So in my subtool palette, go down to the Boolean submenu and click on make Boolean mesh. So now I have my new unified mesh in my tool palette here, and I can click on that, and here we go. And if I zoom in on these corners here, you can see it's much sharper, much crisper. Uh, you can get a much cleaner edge with booleans. When I brought this model in, I was hovering around 90,000 polys. So this one is, is pretty low poly, uh, to the point where I don't even have to decimate it. Uh, I'm well under the half million polys that I typically shoot for when I'm bringing it into my support software. So, so this is, I don't have to worry about that. I can go ahead and skip that step. So we got everything unified. I'm going to go back into my Z plugin menu and back to the 3D Print Hub. Uh, as you'll recall before, first thing we need to do is click Update Size Ratios. Uh, it's the same measurements as before because it's the same ring. So I'm going to make sure to click on millimeters, go back in. Those have now populated, and I can export as a STL file. Now, before I do, uh, one quick mention, a uh, really nice part about the Formlabs support software, Preform, uh, is that in ZBrush, by, uh, with your installation, you do have the option to send this file directly to Preform. I still would recommend saving an STL uh, and keeping it with an editable file just for safekeeping. Uh, it's, it is good practice to keep an editable file along with a print file in case you need to make any changes uh, after you print. Uh, just it's, it's good practice. So I can go ahead and export as STL and give it a name. And there we go. Now it's exported. Click on that message to make it go away, and now go back into Preform. So I'm going to open it up and bring that in. And here's why I wanted to show you both methods. So we didn't get this message with Dynamesh, uh, but with Booleans we did. So it's actually found some geometry in that model that it doesn't like. So it's actually giving us this message saying that these models could potentially be uh, damaged and need repair. So F Preform has a really effective uh, repair algorithm built into it, uh, which does a really good job at fixing models. But I want to show you why uh, this message popped up. And I'm actually going to go back to ZBrush real quick. And I'm going to turn on Polyframes. So, so here's my model. Uh, you can see I did a bit of cleanup with uh, Sculptors Pro uh, just to kind of smooth out a few rough edges. But the part I want to show you is right here where everything was joined. So you can see I've got different sizes and arrangements of quads kind of coming together where these two overlapped. And it's created a number of triangles to try to make sure that these cinch together uh, the way they should be. Uh, anywhere where it's overlapping, you'll see these kinds of triangles. Now, most likely, this is where 
that message is coming from. It's looking at some one of these areas, it's finding something that it doesn't like, and it's asking us to repair it. So be careful with Booleans. Uh, you, can, you can break a model. Uh, Booleans are very complicated, so um, just make sure that if, if you are seeing any kind of print failures or anything like that, you may want to run your files through uh, a, a repair software or just do a Dynamesh on it. Uh, Dynameshes are really good at making sure you get a nice uniform surface. So I can go back to Preform, and since the repair algorithm is really good, I can just hit Repair, and it will go ahead and do the hard work for me. Turn this the right side up here. Now, when I have these two side by side, so I have my Dynamesh one and my Boolean one, you don't really see any difference. Uh, you don't see these harsh corners until I zoom in really far. So either of them are, are totally viable methods. Uh, and again, it's, it's low poly, so I can still move my screen around freely with no issues there. So, so yeah, both methods work well. Uh, you do get a little sharper edges uh, when you're doing Booleans, but just be careful. Uh, you can break the model when you're doing those Boolean commands. Uh, Dynamesh is a little more consistent in that regard. So that's pretty much it. Uh, both of these models are ready for supports and ready for 3D printing, and they appear to be the right size. So I can print them out, see what they look like, and take it from there. So that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us.